So I was watching old footage the other day, like through all of the dream car stuff, and I remember you telling me about Preston Hen. So I pulled it up here. You have to see it again. Like what, it was 2008 that you filmed it. It was yeah, it was a long time ago. And what was interesting is he had a flea market that was called a swap shop. Well, that's the thing I remember is is like. You know, hey, yeah, he's got some Ferraris, but hey, Gary, you should really think about maybe running a flea market or, you know. And then we looked at some spaces that was like, oh, do you know how many guys you could get in here at whatever, $10 a table? <laughs> I don't know what he was charging. He was probably charging a lot more, but. All I know is it was, I think, the second or third largest tourist attraction behind Disney in Florida. It was packed. Yeah. And in the middle of his, um, you know, lunch area like where he's serving burgers and fries he's got a 935 he's got the 275 comp special arguably the most expensive car in the world and a collection of any new supercar you can think of and i'm thinking this guy's making that much money yep. in a flea market yep. it was hilarious <laughs> anyway anyway yep. here i'll uh i'll play it for everyone What do you think? Should we go back to the old show intro? <laughs> well, hi there. Welcome to another episode of Dream Car Garage. Apparently, you need some more tube socks or something. <laughs> what, what are we doing here? We've brought you to the, probably the biggest tourist attraction or the second biggest tourist attraction in the state of Florida. Originally a drive-in movie theater. And uh, after two or three years, we decided to start a flea market out here in the daytime. So that's Preston Hen. How old is he there? Oh, he's got to be, I think he was in his mid-70s. And what was funny about this whole thing is there was a big controversy that had just happened he somehow got into some sort of a spat with one of the local, I don't know, politicians mm -hmm. or cops or whatever, and he was a real character. So long story short, he really got into it. The cops ended up tasering him. He's like what, a, at his flea market? At his flea market. Oh he's in goodness. the mid-70s. <laughs> then he took out commercials. Oh, England, when he's that old. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> then he took out commercials on TV and says, come on down to the flea market. Maybe you'll get tasered. And he's got a doll of himself getting tasered. Like, he was hilarious. He is a character, eh? <laughs> but we're not here because we need tube socks. We're not here because 12 million other people come here every year or they've got 2,000 full-time vendors. The reason we're here is the owner of this joint actually happens to be a real car guy. I think he's going to be offended that you call it a joint, oh, by the way. <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> That's like the encyclopedia definition of joint. <laughs> this guy's joint. Did he invite you guys down? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. He's one Daytona, he's one Sebring, and he's got probably one of the most comprehensive car collections right in the middle of this. So no matter what you're thinking about this place, business is very good. 12 million people come here. Okay, what was his deal with the yellow Ferraris? Um, well, the whole flea market was yellow. Okay. And I think the drive-in movie theater started yellow, but there was just a yellow theme everywhere. Like, look behind us when we're talking. Yeah, yeah, Everything yeah, no, I know, I see that, yeah. yeah. So he's got the yellow F50. Tom drove the yellow F50. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Yeah. He's got at least $12 million worth of cars sitting in a museum just behind us. Okay, hang on. $12 million worth of cars. Yeah, he's a little light on yeah. that estimate. <laughs> yeah, even during 2008. Oh, yeah, very light. What was an F50 worth then? Because the Enzo, the Enzo was now six years old. Yeah. The F50 back then was probably... An F40 was maybe a half million bucks. A GTO was a half million bucks. But maybe a touch Probably, more. Or yeah, even a touch the same. more. Yeah. In around that same. Wow. Yeah. So it's not going to be an all bad day for what me. What color is it? It's yellow. <laughs> not what do you think? It's, it's absolutely <laughs> yellow. Shockingly yellow. Right around 1990, Piero Ferrari was driving an F40 as a daily driver to and from the factory and his home. His idea, based on that remarkable car, the F40, was to create this car, the F50. And let me tell you, from what we know about Ferrari, there's very few guys who can actually come up with a concept and get it done. Well, the basic concept was to get as close to their F1 car as possible for a car that was not only good on the track, but good on the street as well. So I'm looking at it and I'm 
was reading about the engine, and it sounds like that oh, is abs- the baddest ab- engine out it, of the F40 or the Enzo. Yeah, no, it's it's a it's a trick engine and trick chassis, and really, I would say from that era, probably the closest to a race car. They really wanted to make it a supercar. A, a, yeah, a street legal race car. Yeah, it was very much like a 333 SP. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, there's no doubt about it. This is based on a, a race car. The uh, creature comforts in here are virtually nil. Now, this particular car is set up on Pirelli P0s. There's no way I'm going to be able to get them hot enough to make this car perform. But on the other hand, you're going to need a track to make it perform anyway. The thing I like most about this car is that it's obvious when you look at it that it's a well-used car. The dash is far from pristine. The Pirelli P0s are still on it from the last track day, but still, we can open it up. I'll tell you this, when you do that, it demands all of your attention. As far as the inside of the cockpit are concerned, there are some gauges, and once you've seen where the red line is, you don't really need to look at them anymore. But I do care about hearing this thing sing. Let's try it one more time. Okay, so where was this? Does he have a little like test track at his no, place? No, it was basically the parking lot across the street because when they were jammed up on the weekends, they'd have these laneways that you would park in. Okay, so okay. it was up and down the laneways that were all paved. Oh, because yeah. it really looks like a racetrack yeah. that you guys were on. Yeah. So did he ever, like, is that where he took his cars out? Just no, to... no, he was a racer. So yep. he ran Daytona and stuff with some big name guys. So he would go to the track. He used all of his cars. He was, a, he was right into it. Because he bought, like, I was looking through um, what he owned there, and he bought that 512 BBLM brand new. Oh, yeah. And he was the first guy to race it. Yeah. No, yeah. He, he bought some serious cars and did some serious races. So he he was really successful even when, clearly in 1980 when he bought that 512. Yeah, yeah absolutely. But before that, when well, did he I, start this? I think he started the swap shop, and I, I don't know 100% because I'm going from memory from, you know, 15, 18 years ago. Yeah. Is it, the drive-in theater, he bought it as a drive-in theater, and I think it was a porn theater. Oh my goodness. <laughs> seedy, I may be wrong, but Florida for some story reason, here. He said, and then his whole thing was, well, it sits empty all day long. Right. I only use it a couple nights a week, and the rest of the time I got this empty thing, so I'm going to rent out some space and have this flea market, and obviously the flea market just took off. Right. And he said, well, I don't need the drive-in theater anymore. So he was still running it as a drive-in theater. Oh, yeah. Okay. He started running He's it a as a real drive-in hustler. theater. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's good. <laughs> Say what you want about a Ferrari, any Ferrari, but nothing, and I mean nothing, beats that feeling. So you have to ask yourself, do you need a car like this? Well. Nobody really needs about a half million dollar supercar. But do you want a car like this? I'm telling you, compared to the Enzo, the F40, this car is remarkable, yeah. I want a car like this, except, may I have mine in red, please? (laughs) Look at the nice little edit you guys did. (laughs) Very high tech. We'll talk to the man behind Fort Lauderdale's swap shop. So you were bang on there. Tom said it was about a half million dollar supercar. Yeah. 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 So 935 there. Oh, yeah. You guys don't even address that thing. No. He's got, man, he's got some serious stuff. And everything has the swap shop oh, yeah. market decal yeah. on it. Yeah. That was the sponsor. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, can you imagine having the foresight to buy a 275 Comp Special right from the racetrack? Le Mans in 1967, that would take a pretty shrewd man. Hang on, so he bought it? I don't think he bought it directly from the racetrack. I think he bought it shortly after, like, you know, the car was basically a race car. Yeah. And then actually, and we'll get 
we'll get clarification. Harley Cluxton at one point owned it, and I think he sold it to uh, Preston. Preston, Hand. okay, yeah. yeah. Ferrari built this thing, and like, what what the heck were the homologation rules when they were building a one-off car? Well, so they built three comp specials, but well, they said I mean, they, they actually built four, but one was a year later. Okay. So the three during '65. Okay, and you know, basically, it was. Uh, a continuation of the GTO. Really what it was, was a, you know... A it was a super lightweight frame. It was the, the cheater house car. The yeah. other two were nothing like this car. Right. So this car was like super lightweight. If you looked at the shape of the roof, very different. I mean, it was cheated up in every way Ferrari could cheat it up because they had their asses handed to them by the Daytona Coupe in the 64 year before. Yeah. at yeah. Le Mans. Yeah. So it wasn't going to happen again. Right. So... Well, Ryan was telling me that th this thing, well, first of all, it's nothing to do with the 275, really. It's no. not the same body. No. It's not the same chassis. No. You know, the rear end looks like a GTO. The interior looks like a GTO. The FIA, you know, kind of put up a stink. Said, we're not going to homologate this. And Enzo said, fine, I'm not GT racing. I'm boycotting you. And then they came to some agreement. And they <laughs> ran this thing. <laughs> that, that is, in my mind, the baddest... Ferrari. Oh, for sure. I just bought that special car in 67 because I wanted to, to have a race car type to drive on the street, especially a Ferrari. So I just drove it. I had no idea. I was just, just blind luck. It is a one of a kind a GTB two cam that won Le Mans in 65. It won third overall, but it won its class and it still holds the record at Le Mans for a GT car. Now obviously Preston didn't buy the 275 Comp Special just for the investment value. He's a lover of all cars with the prancing horse and all sports cars for that matter and it shows through in his collection that sits in the front foyer. Well the, the supercars, I, I would have to start with the Bugatti, I'm just, this is my second day with it, I have to start with it. But then the FXX that I raced in China and Japan is a super Enzo. So he was on the FXX program. Oh, 100%. He yeah. did all the track days and just loved it. Yeah. 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 So he was a really good big Ferrari customer too. Right. Yeah. So right. he would get the latest and greatest. And I remember he had just taken delivery of that Veyron yep. you know, a day or two before. That was his pride and joy. He was you know, beaming with that one. But he, but he loved Ferraris first Oh, 100%. And foremost. Yeah. 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 He loved racing. Yeah. Yeah, he was a big racer. Hmm. You know how Ferrari is very particular and everything. Did they ever, do you think they really, do you think they cared a little bit about having their most expensive, most significant car in the middle of a flea market in Florida? I, <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> Today they probably would. You know, they would think it's sacrilege. Yeah. But it's just so cool. It's such... You know, it's so American, is what it is. A hundred percent. Where, you know, guys obviously made a ton of money. Yep. Loves racing and doesn't give a damn what anybody else thinks. Yep. And good for him. Put it on display in the middle of his frickin', you know, food court. He's not scared. He's not yep. afraid of any of that stuff. And and everybody got to see it. Yep. It was really cool. Yep. Wasn't tucked away in some garage where nobody ever got to see it. Yeah. No, good point. And yeah. I, you know, I wonder, do you know if it's still down there? I, I don't. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, Preston passed away, you know, quite a few years ago, so I don't, I don't know where it, yeah. And it's not street legal, and it's an awesome car on a racetrack, very awesome. And then, of course, I've got the Enzo here, and then the Maserati MC12. I've got the McLaren SLR. I also have the Porsche Carrera GT. And then I've got the Ford GT that has special superchargers and everything on it. It's got tremendous horsepower. It's probably got 750 horsepower to rear wheels. It's awesome. You know, so looking at that collection there, he's probably made like, you know, a million dollars on just kind of his new late model Ferraris per car. And then what do you think? His, his car collection, since he bought it, has probably made him, what, $70 million? Oh, yeah, depending on what he paid. But you know what? I talked to Harley earlier. Yeah. Let's ask Harley what he knows about that. Okay. All right. Hello. Harley? Hello. 
Peter Clute, how are you? I'm good. How are you? So what do you what do you remember about did you own the Comp Special at one point? I was the first private owner, I guess you would say, of it. Yep. Wow. Um, I bought it from um, bought it from Nort, uh, from Mr. Caddy. Um, wow. And you used to drive it around like it was uh, just a used Ferrari. Well, it was a used Ferrari. <laughs> you a lot of mileage on it. What'd you pay for that thing? Holy <laughs> um, well, it was a S&H green stamps. I'm kind of old, but remember that? No, I'm not that old. <laughs> oh, but you're Canadian. Okay, so S&H green stamps, that was a savings thing. You know, you would get, if you bought, like, I don't know. I don't think you buy it with liquor, because that would be like food stamps. Um, so, but if you bought, like, um, a TV or something, you got so many millions of S&H food stamps, I uh, and then you would put them on a, you know, into a book. And I had like a thousand, three hundred books of these things. Wow. <laughs> so basically, 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 it was free. <laughs> Nothing is free. How how long did you how long did you have that for, Harley? Two, three years. Wow. And then you sold it to Preston. I sold it. Wow. For twelve thousand dollars, maybe, maybe it was eleven thousand. We keep on arguing about that. Um, <laughs> but I think it was twelve thousand dollars. Wow. Um, well, it was nineteen seventy. Had to be nineteen seventy. Wow. Thank And yeah. And so, um, and then Preston um, told me four years or five years after that, uh, he had put the car up for sale. Um, and I think it was in, it wasn't, maybe it was in an Auto Week magazine, or it was a newspaper at that time. What was it, what was the one that was, yeah, it was Auto Week, it was a newspaper. Yeah. It was a, a weekly newspaper. And he had put it up for some outrageous amount of money, and it was, um, again, figures kind of that, that date, but I, let's, let's say $10 million. Mm -hmm. And so I called him up, and said, hey, Preston, will you take a trade? And he said, well, okay, what is it? I said, uh, 1075, the double LeBron winner, because I had it at the time. And he went, no, this isn't worth that sort of money. I said, <laughs> really? <laughs> the other thing was, he told me that when he bought it, the, the compression was down, and I should pay for you know, rebuilding the motor. And I said, <laughs> As is, where is? <laughs> but that doesn't matter. You know? I said, but you took the motor out and you put in another, two, you know, just a regular 275 GTB motor in it so you could tool around and save the other motor. He said, so? What does that mean? So, anyway, that was frustrating. That hilarious. Car was fantastic. It, um, I, you know, besides driving it back and forth from uh, Lake Forest, Illinois, down to, uh, University um, in New Orleans. I um, I raced it at one uh, call it nasty car race um, that was in uh, Louisiana at the time, and it was a quarter mile oval. Uh, and um, I won it with that. So that hang on, know, hang, hang on, hang on, hang on. on. <laughs> you didn't oval race that car. You took that car to a quarter mile bullring and ran it around with a bunch of NASCARs. Yeah. I blew the doors off, too. <laughs> and I was only in second gear. Because I couldn't go any faster. You know, I mean, third gear, it just like... So then I drove it home. Back to school. But it was good. It was a... It was a twin lap, I think it was a twin lap, 25 lap, and it wasn't, it was kind of easy, because it wasn't bank, it was a little bank, um, but um, the good news, it was paved, and um, yeah, there's a, I have a picture. You have to send us the pictures you have of that car. Yeah, all of it's, I mean, in, in every, 
all the duty that it served me. Yes. Everything. Yes. 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 And a young and we want to see okay. a young Harley. Okay. <laughs> 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 yeah, you know, it was red at that point. Oh, really? Was, it, yeah, of course, press and paint it yellow. Swap shop it yellow. Shop's car. Yeah. But, um, oh, I know you have. I'll, I'll send the pictures. But the, the best picture is, I think it was on Charter Street, as they call it, in New Orleans. Um, anyway, it, it, I have a big Yale lock on the back of the 50-gallon, um, um, it goes to the, the Monza gas cap. And it's, um, it's to, you know, so that uh, I wouldn't get all the gas siphoned out because I parked it on the street. Um, I wouldn't get all the gas siphoned out of it um, because it was, the gas at that point was like 25 cents. And that was a lot of money. <laughs> so, I just haven't seen that seriously. You guys? No, I, I haven't oh, seen, okay. you, you have to send us those pictures. We're going to put them up when we air this thing. That is yeah. hilarious. So you used it as daily transportation. Daily transportation. I finally had to go to a motorcycle only because I was getting tired of changing plugs. Wow. Um, and it was, uh, but, you know, I learned so much about mechanics uh, with the car. Um, and it was good. I mean, it never, it never let me down wow um it was it was great and it was fast and again it was a race car so um thankfully mr canetti felt really bad about selling me the car um with straight pipes um and so and at uh, canetti motors you know he said no 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 no, no. Yeah, but we have to put mufflers on the car for you. And, and I said, no, I don't want mufflers. Why would I want mufflers? I mean, you know, and he said, no, 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 we're going to put mufflers on. So he put these, it was like Midas had taken LSD or something. I mean, these things were cans that went halfway up the back, straight up um, the back. And I guess he was afraid that I was going to back it up and, um, you know, take off the uh, schnapp exhaust. So he took the stop exhaust, I got those, but then just put an extension on, on the thing, and they look like two, I don't know if what you would call them, um, with the, they were very unusual, I'll tell you that. I could clean the windshield of any car that I backed into, um, because it came right up the back of the, the deck, the cam tail, past, you know, past the rear of the, or the top of the tail of the car, and then they bent so that it was like, you know, a snowblower, but in reverse, you know? So um, I drove that home and then used them for a while, um, but they were really difficult and they looked really tacky. So then I just put the stop exhaust back on and um, a very small muffler uh, mm. just to get back pressure. Um, but that was it, and no window, so it's kind of stupid. That's why I had to lock. And of course, the gas cap didn't wasn't a locking gas cap. Cap um, it was a racing cap, a Monza cap. So that's why I put it there. And of course, the car did have but door locks, but they were kind of academic considering it didn't have any windows. I mean, it just had, <laughs> it just had you know, it was plastic windows. But they weren't roll up or anything, and so um, and it had uh, you know plastic wind wings. So yeah, how Har Harley? How cheated up was that car compared to even the other comp specials or the lightweight cars or the comp cars? How different was that car? It was. Yeah, first of all, you have to remember. Um, Gary, uh, that in 64, you know, the four GTs under wires charge, of course, he didn't have a chance. You guys know the history of that, you know. Um, they fell out, um, but Dan Gurney and, um, and, and uh, Bob Bondurant won uh, the 
GT class of 64 with a Daytona coupe. Right. And the piss off factor with a Commander Tory was f***ing huge. So he told for Gary, Laurel, who I'm you know, very good friends with, um, said, we're going to win. So just take this car, and it was 275 GTB, and then, you know, let's make it lower, let's make it longer, and let's make it wider. So it was, um, I'm guessing, eight inches wider, uh, nine inches lower than 275, the roof, 275 GTB, a regular one. Mm-hmm. Um, so much so that the dry sump tank, the refill was through the um, through the hood on the right hand side. So it'll cut out there, mm-hmm. but it was there because the hood was so much lower. The whole car was so much lower that the carburetors, that the um, intake, I guess you would say, and that and the blister on the on the hood. Yeah. That you don't see on a 275 GTB. Yep. Well, that was on there because the, you know, the 38 Webers that were on the car, um, which of course was like, that's because it had a 275 P motor in it. Um, you know, were were up, you know, velocity stacks, and that's what that that scoop was, you know, on on it. So it was about as cheater as you can get um, the transaxle I guess there were three different transaxles for it um, and everything was and it was done at the factory at night um, and everything that was on the car there wasn't anything I remember that the dashboard was definitely a 275 GTB but with me sitting in it um and I'm not that, you know, I'm not that tall, as you know. My knees were hitting the dashboard. Uh, press and put a regular, uh, well, a Nardi steering wheel back on it, wood steering wheel back on it. Mm-hmm. Um, but when I got the car, it had a, a Momo, um, boy, I, if it was 10 inches, I'd be very, very surprised, with um, a huge uh, aluminum cap. Um, that just extended string wheel arm as it goes back down. There's a universal joint and then mm-hmm. goes up, you know, to the, uh, up to the uh, rack and pinion. Well, that was changed, um, and so it was to give a driver that you know was taller um, more distance, you know, so he could get back farther in the seat, and, um, you know, that was totally different, and I, I think, I think it was six inches, if I'm not mistaken. Wow. It's huge, um, and, um, it had all of the gauges, you know, all the, the, the switches, um, that would make it look, that was the only thing that was normal, normally, on the car, was the, the, uh, gauge, and the windshield was not a 275 GTB either. So because of that, they'd already gone through yelling and screaming or, or trying to get the, the 275 LM homologated right. in, G, in GT. And you know the ACO FIA said, nope, you didn't make enough of them. So that's why they went with this normally. And so they had Jacques Swatters run the car, but it was a factory car. All the mechanics were all factory mechanics. And um, they put in Belgium drivers who were very, very good drivers. And um, they just, yeah, if you looked at the lap times, I mean, they could have won the race. They were that much, they were that fast. Um, and of course, the FIA Lamar said, yep, you won the race, but don't ever f-ing bring this car back ever again. <laughs> and then that was the net, which was true, you know. 
never was allowed to race in any international events. After again. that, wow. <laughs> but it was a, it was a cheater. I mean, that really pissed off Enzo big time. When he lost so, in '64. When he lost in 64, it pissed him off. Yeah, because, you know, the GTO was vaunted. You know, obviously, the GTO beat everything. And, and um, you know, obviously, Shelby knew that they couldn't win, you know, with a regular roadster. So that's what they went, you know, to Italy. You know, Italian uh, body company, which is called, um, uh, okay, that's here, so Grand Sport. Mm -hmm. Like the Grand Sport Corvettes. Yeah. And that's where they made all the bodies. And that's why every one of the Daytona Coupes, and you should really talk to Pete about this, but um, every one of the Daytona Coupes had a different windshield hmm. and had a different roof line um, because they were all handmade. They had little different things here and there. And, um, and that was only to get the speed. And I, you know, I think you can definitely look up. And I, I knew it at one point how much faster the Daytona coupes were down Mulsanne than an open, you know, Toyota oh, yeah. Cobra was. I mean, yeah. it was massive, massive. Out of um, out of all the cars that you've owned that have gone through your hands. Is that the biggest regret, not keeping? Mm. I mean, obviously you tried getting it back, trading it for 1075. I was kidding with him. Oh! <laughs> I was kidding, are you kidding me? <laughs> eh? No, no. Are you kidding me? No. He said, besides that, I knew he said it wasn't worth it, you know. Yeah. That's for So, no. Um, I would say, it's a toss-up between 1075 um, and Marcello. That's what I called it, it was Marcello. Um, because the car was, it was like having a dog, you know. I mean, a real dog. Yeah. Not, you know, a dog of a car. Uh, so, um, it was a pet. It was, it was like, we did everything together, so. Uh, That's cool. What do you think... Last question. What do you think that car is worth today? And in the hierarchy of Ferraris, where does that fit in with, you know? Well, I also was asked, uh, myself and Marcel Massini were asked by Preston um, to come up with it being you know, an expert Ferrari. I guess mm -hmm. uh, uh, what we thought having owned the car myself what we thought individually um, the car was worth at that point we I have to look at exactly the date but we both came up with um, 50 million dollars and how long ago and was now, that um, uh, that would probably be 19 this wasn't that long ago well I, I think it was 2000 and something. Okay. And today? Yeah. What? And today, what do you think it's worth? I think it's worth $80 million, and, and I'll tell you why. And most people now agree um, that it's the only 1965 model GTO. Mm -hmm. Obviously, blew the doors off any GTO, um, 250, but more than that, it was along the same lines, you know, because if anybody that could prove that you could drive it on the street, you know, and then go race it, I did. Hmm. So, um, I think that, you know, it's the most valuable car out there. I, uh, Ferrari, more valuable, and GTO owners agree. Yeah. Um, uh, because you look at the other two cars that were the Speciale um, and um, the one that, I'm trying to remember who, who bought the car, uh, uh, the one that looks the most about like 
five, um, was, I don't know, sold maybe 10, 12 years ago, 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm not quite sure where that went. Um, but it went for a lot, a lot of money. And it certainly was not, wasn't it looked very much like, like, yeah, 6885, but it was taller. It was more of a GTB. Right. Size well, was. Like and so it didn't have the uh, motor. And then the third one, um, Rob Walt owns. And it's very, very fast, but it doesn't look anything like 6885, like yeah. Marcello does. Yeah. Um, all the GT owners that I know, maybe exclusively of um, your friend, Canadian friend there in, in Montreal, mm -hmm. um, you know, thinks that it probably is the most valuable Ferrari because it was made at the factory, purpose-built to win Le Mans, which it did. And that's a pretty cool story right there. Yeah. Um, and it is a wicked fast car, so yeah, I I think compared to a GTO, and you know how what I feel about GTOs, but having said that, um, you know, if that's if that's the club it needs to be in, it certainly um has proven that, and that's exactly what Marcel I think um, believes right now too. Yeah, <laughs> we're obviously very very good friends, but you know, I mean, we both argued. You know, at that point, we, we just proved beyond any reasonable doubt that that was, in fact, a GTO. And it was purpose-built. Um, and it's only one of them. Yeah. And it was just a continuation of the GTO, and it won that class. Yep. doesn't matter that, you know, it was kicked out after that. <laughs> but it won the class. Right? It, I think it makes it more valuable because it was kicked out after that. Even if it is yellow. Yeah. But, you know, <laughs> Even if it is yellow. Yeah, I mean the whole story. But that's that's what these collector cars are all about. It aren't it, 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 I mean, you yep. think about it. it it's uh, it's what gets us going. It's the story. Yep. Yep. Harley. Yeah. Harley, I want to thank you for your time. Gary, you have not said anything. I've just been listening, taking it all in. I've determined, I've determined, Harley, that we need to start an entire special collection of cheater cars throughout the years. Doesn't matter what they are. Perfect. Yeah, I think it'll do well. They're not nasty cars. I don't know about them. Uh, there's <laughs> maybe one or two that might make the collection, but all sports okay. cars. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wait, yeah, the, yeah there, there are some really great ones. Um, yeah. Um, uh, what do you call those? The, are they the bumper cars or whatever? <laughs> <laughs> bumper cars. Isn't that called the, those bumper cars that were actually real nasty cars? I mean, they were, uh, you know, production cars that had serial numbers. And oh, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. For yeah. sure. And then, then we d we'll have to get our buddy Ray Everingham to tell his story about some of the cheater cars well, he right. built. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, he <laughs> might not tell him yet. Cheater cars. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that's the collection we need to start collecting. Uh, yeah. Thanks again. Next time, uh, you know, when the world clears up here, we're going to have to get you up for another chump car race at uh, most We're ready. All right. We're ready. Okay. Thanks, thanks Harley. Harley. Take care. Right, bye. bye bye. <laughs> there is an enter entertaining car guy. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So they went, so I guess Enzo. You know, had enough pull with FIA to say, let us race Le Mans, and then we'll be done with it. And yeah. that's what happened. Yeah. Wow. No, wow. And it's interesting, because, I mean, I think he did that a lot. Obviously, he did it when we talked to Walter Wolf about that Formula One car. Yeah. You know, yeah. he basically got the car disqualified on the last race so they could win the championship that year. Yeah. Huh. So, so a cool cheater car. What does Harley say? Seventy million? He thinks it's 80, worth 80, eighty million. So you think the last GTO sold for seventy million? That's public yep. knowledge, and that's a few years ago. There is really only one cheater house car comp special. Yep. You know the other two are you know real comp specials, but this is the one. Yep. And I find it I like you talk about collector cars being uh, great investments. Can you imagine eleven thousand dollars? <sighs> to 
80 million and it could bring more. Yep. You get two guys that want to have it that own GTOs. Oh, it, oh, I mean, it totally could. I think if you were to take a survey of the whatever, 33, 36 guys who yep. own GTOs, yep. you'd probably get more than two who'd say, yeah, I want to buy that car. Exactly. Yeah. And who knows what up. it could be? And then in the grand scheme of, you know, the art world, well, you've had paintings like the Da Vinci that sold for 400 plus million. Ah, so the Ferrari's cheap. It looks cheap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh. All right, let's see if we got any more on the show here. Well, that's a wrap on another episode of Dream Car Garage, where, as you can see, at the swap shop, in the middle of all of this visual noise, we've got the actual Don Johnson car from Miami Vice. What do you think of that? So he's got the actual, he's got the actual Miami Vice car he, there. He had the Miami Vice car, the high mirror white car, the actual car. Right? Oh, that's cool. Because yeah. I just, uh, well, I just drove the... Uh, High and, mirror car. Well, high mirror, eight, yeah, an 86 car, which was, I don't know if it was the same year exactly, if, if that was it's an either 85 car. or 6. Yeah, yeah, yeah but uh, so he, what do you think? <laughs> he, just, he just bought interesting cars, race cars, and I don't know if he ever really sold anything. He may have traded a couple cars, yeah. but I think, I mean, obviously, he'd been offered a ton of money throughout the years for the car. Oh, and he special. could have sold that. He could have sold it for 15 million, 20 million, 30 million. All the way up. And he would have been, yeah. you know, it would have been way worse off. Yeah. It's interesting. I mean, the great cars, I think, will just keep appreciating. Yeah. yeah. No, and those guys who have them, it's going to be harder and harder to buy those great cars because they've seen what's happened over the last 20 years. Yeah. Yeah, and you had ups and downs. I mean, at the end of, you know, 89, 90. That's, that's more than 20 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's the big one. I remember the nose over yeah. very distinctly. <laughs> right, but since then, you know, Ferraris haven't really gone down much. No, because up until, like, literally after they bottomed out, In call what, it 91? 93, okay. 94, they slowly crept up, and then 07, 08 to 15, they went up on a rocket ship ride. They've maybe nosed over a little bit, you know, the last five years, but or six years, whatever you want to call the peak. But long term, like if the cars are being kept for 20 years, yep. they've been nothing but great investments. That is arguably the best automotive investment ever. Potentially, yep. yeah. How about this? In the middle of this zoo, would you believe the guy parks a 1967 275 GTB Comp Special? Yeah, what do you, you bought pay for it? it? 18 grand, 1967. That's not bad. But it's worth 20 mil today. <laughs> I and I'd park it right in the middle of my swap shop if I owned it too. <laughs> I mean, there's a prime example. You said 2008, it's worth 20 million. Yeah. And it probably was. That was probably even a high estimate in 2008. Correct. Yeah, or or probably on the money, I guess. If a GTO is kind of getting near that, but it's funny because uh, Preston told us he paid eighteen grand and bought it in '67. Yeah, Harley owned the car and sold it to him. He says eleven, so Preston's already inflated. Yes, I paid more. Yes, yeah. <laughs> somewhere around there. It's irrelevant. I can see why you're not impressed with the Don Johnson car. Join us next week on Dream Car Garage, where you never know what's going to happen next. Oh, that's good. Yeah. That's good. No, we'll have to do another one. We'll have to, uh, and we'll have to have our Harley up and uh, yeah. come to tell some old stories. We'll keep picking interesting cars, yeah. of cars that we shot, and it'll be interesting to see what they started out value-wise, mm -hmm. what they were when we shot them, in like on Dream Car, on Dream Car, yeah, and where they've gone today. But yeah, there's not many that have gone down. No, but I mean, it'd be interesting to see how the cycle fluctuated a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for watching. Be sure to drop a like and a comment now to help our channel get seen. Hit subscribe and check out our other videos for more legendary motorcars.